Each and every week, I get a chance to select my power player of the week. And this week was a no brainer. Who would have thought, right? Like who would have thought KJ Costello, Mike Leach, the mad scientist, uh, Mississippi State, uh, SEC, and the Air Raid offense, man. Who would have thought after everything you've been through, man, in the year, your injuries, everything, to be in this moment right now, man, how big was this for you? I mean, you know, without, like, getting too too deep into it, I mean, you know, multiple times, you know the drill. You've been hurt. You don't know if you're going to play again at a high level. I mean, you don't know. And a lot of people were asking, like, when was the first time coming? I'm like, I was throwing, but I wasn't the same guy, you right, know? Right. Like, it took me months, you know, to get back to where I wanted to be. Uh, so, I mean, it was just, I mean, I'd be lying if I said three, four months ago, I knew, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't know, it was just chipping away. Like, I honestly started feeling good, like last week, you know? <laughs> like, and that's, it, how, that's how it happens, man. That's, that's football and that's what, people sometimes don't understand is like no those injuries they don't go away you know just like that like we got to work to get those back man and and like you said you just started feeling good last week man and as I'm watching you on the football field again 623 yards five touchdowns um I mean and you guys just beat the defending champs um How'd you guys do it, man? Who were the key factors? What were the key factors, man, that helped you guys win this game the way you did? I mean, the only thing I can really think about is, uh, like, literally the whole, like, I remember watching LSU last year. I knew every play. It was, like, the first time I was actually, like, a real fanboy. I got knocked out of my season, you know, so I was watching a lot of college football. Knew every single guy on the team. I was like, wow, these guys, I mean, this is historic. Mm -hmm. Came down here June 1st. I mean, was so, like, locked in on trying to learn a new offense just to give myself a chance to succeed. I had no idea I'd be able to, you know? I mean, two months to learn a new offense, you know, same thing as everyone else in the country. Most of the time, it doesn't end up the way you want it to. I did know part of the decision was coming here. I mean, the system is, you know, it's right here. Like, it's just, it's repetition, it's repetition through, or it's intuition through repetition. I mean. I mean, I went from every coverage. Uh, you're not running this, you're not running that into that coverage. And this is like, we don't care, we're feeling that. Like, guys don't know why they're sitting there. They just know they're sitting there. That's Mike Leach, man. That's the mad scientist. That's what he does. He just draws up stuff on the back of a napkin. And he then really he does. He like... was doing it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you're just... like, Coach, this ain't going to work, man. And then you get in the game, and then Osiris Mitchell wide open. I think what played into the success of beating the national champs, like, I, we literally spent, I, at least I did, but we spent zero time even thinking about it. I mean, I didn't even know who was on their defense. You know, I didn't even like, I was a huge fan of the SEC growing up. Like, I just, I didn't have any time to spend any time like diagnosing what they were doing. We were just, I mean, our practices, I mean, there's no doubt that we practice harder than anybody else. I mean, yeah. every single day, rep, like, I mean, you know, there's practices where we're just stops. Like, all right. 300 balls, everyone line up, you know, from five yards away in the middle of practice. Cause you know, we have, we've had a couple drops, you know? Yeah. But let's get into some of the plays, man. Let's get into some of these plays because uh, you had one, I want to start off with, was just uh, a, a two crossing routes. Um, and the interesting thing to me on this play was that you laid it up. Most quarterbacks, when you have two crossing routes, will throw a dart to you and try to hit you in stride. You saw that the DB may be cut underneath them and you laid it up, man. Is that is that what you saw as well? Yeah, you know, um, I mentioned you talking a little bit earlier through this play. I mean, it obviously is a man beater. LSU's got yeah. some of the best DBs in the country. They want to come out and play man. Uh, I threw that pick on that crossing route a, a little before this and, you know, the dude, the dude undercut it. Um, so here I got a pretty good look on it. Um, if I did throw it on a line, he would have took that to the house. Um, and man, you do have a little bit more freedom, you know, you don't necessarily have to worry about another guy coming, popping off from a zone, maybe like that backside corner here. So yeah. you have extra space to kind of let him attack. And that's kind of what we did there. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, LSU has great defensive backs, a lot of speed all over the place. 
And then the, the, the pressure up front, man. I mean, you had guys crossing all day long, man. And, and I know as an offensive player just how tough that is for an offensive line to block up. And then you add the speed to that. Um, was there was there any moments in this game where you felt like the pressure uh, was maybe getting to you a little bit or, or maybe slowing you guys down a little bit? Because it didn't look like it from our perspective. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I was feeling it come Sunday, Monday. But, uh, you know, in the game, uh, not necessarily. I mean, just trying not to not to be gun shy whatsoever. As soon as you start worrying about that pressure, boom, you miss a big play, you know? Yeah. Um, as soon as you start looking to check it down to your back sooner because you're worried about the pressure, you miss a big play. Um, so I was trying to stay locked in and fearless back there. There was a couple things I got to clean up drop-wise. Like, you know, a couple times I was trying to buy myself a little extra time because they were coming. Um, but it was different mid-drive, late in the drive. You can tell, man, we, were, we get two, three first downs, the pass rush diminishes. DBs don't want to cover as long. Things change, so that's that's where I'm trying to get. Yeah, uh, trying to get. I like I like playing that position at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, and and you kind of said something a little earlier. You said, uh, you know, I was just kind of feeling it, man. So this next play, I wanted to show you was kind of like the nail in the coffin. Um, just a simple go route to Osiris Mitchell again seemed to be one of your favorite targets, man. But I heard you say in the interview you guys rep this. 500,000 times just rep after rep after rep. Is it Was that kind of what unfolded eventually in this game and, and what led to this big play? I mean, like, so we start pat and go every practice, but once again, Leach, he's got to do it a little bit different. I mean, <laughs> he'll run that thing, he'll run the drill for 15, 20 minutes, you know, and every single throw is a fade, you know, so sometimes I'll get more throws just in the first period of practice than I did in the past. Um, but it's got to be over the outside shoulder or we'll continue doing the drill if he doesn't see it over and over and over and over again. Um, you know, I, I threw a lot of back shoulders at Stanford, so it was a throw I had to kind of lock back in um, the arsenal. But, I mean, he's caught this. I mean, just the way these guys in the matter of two, three months, uh, you know, have acquired the skill of over the shoulder, which is not easy. Not I mean, it didn't start this way two months ago, but the progress has been pretty rapid, so it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, man, those, those those back shoulder throws are, uh, for defenses, as you know, some of the hardest throws to stop because when that DB has his shoulder to your back, it's open season, man. And, and as uh, a running back who also played receiver, uh, I loved when the quarterback threw me a back shoulder, uh, uh, especially when the DB wasn't looking, man, because that, that, that was always open season. Uh, uh, but I want to ask you about this gauntlet of a schedule you guys have in the SEC, man, because I never had a schedule this tough when I played at USC, man. When I was in college, you got to play Auburn, you got to play Alabama, uh, you got to play Texas A&M. Um, Y'all you know, got some tough games, man. And then you just beat uh, you just beat LSU, man. You got some tough games. What is it going to take for you guys to get through this gauntlet of a schedule, man? What what? How good can this team be? Yeah, I I mean. One thing I realized, I mean, I heard a lot of coaches, every player in the country, they talk about going 1-0 and every week and, you know, doing us and not responding to, uh, or not reacting to the opponent or worrying about the opponent. I mean, Leach, like, that's just what he does. I mean, he really does not care who lines up on the other side. We're, I mean, yeah, we're going to break down film and understand our opponent, but we're literally trying to per, per, uh, perfect our craft um, at what we're doing. I mean, we're running a concise play. We're going to run it fast and we're going to run it, you know, to, to a T. And we still, I mean, looking at the tape, I'd say 30, 40% of the stuff, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't execute. We were able to execute on 60. If we can get that up towards 70, um, 75, I think that would, that would end up being the goal by the end of the season. Um, but talking about the gauntlet, I mean, <laughs> You know, I was a fan. I played in the Pac-12 just like you, man. I, I never been through a schedule like this. So I'm going to try and do the same thing that I did LSU week and really not concern myself with it. I know it may sound like I'm not respecting the opponent, but like it, it kind of fits in with our scheme. We're not necessarily worried about what they're about to come out and run. Um, we're just trying to react um, and uh, do our job. Do you have any funny Mike Leach stories, man? Because anybody who knows Mike... Mike Leach knows uh, he's one of a kind. He's an amazing guy, a uh, really good person, man. But uh, he, he is he is one of a kind. Oh, man. I 
you, you, I have about 200 of them being here. <laughs> being here. It's hard to rack my brain, but I'm going to end up going to the same one that I just love. I mean, I'm sitting there in a meeting. We're going over early 95, just base play and practice about two weeks ago. And, you know, all of a sudden he's going through the read and then he breaks out. So, any of you guys know General Patton? You know, most, most feared American leader during the American Revolution. Can you guys tell me about General Patton? And he starts giving the backstory, starts starts talking about, you know, battle plans, starts talking about things, you know, most mm -hmm. of us have no idea about. <laughs> and then hops back into hops back into the progression, you know, hops back into the play. Maybe two, three plays goes by. And then he hops back into the story. And I mean, he just has an incredible way of um keep I mean, keeping like the feeling in the room. I mean, you're you're not afraid to ask any question about anything to do with football or the world or life or anything. I mean, it's just like, it's an open forum. There's no dumb question um, because if most people think it's dumb, he probably wants to know something about it. Mm -hmm. um, he's just got an incredible arsenal of like facts and worldly knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, for me being poli sci, I mean, stand, like it's, it's super fun. You know I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like I I'm- political science major, man. That was my major too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, I mean, I should know General Patton's scores and whatnot, but I mean, we'll sit there in a meeting. I mean, you know, and we'll, you know, I'm not, you know, we're, we're there voluntarily once the time passes up. Yeah. But, I mean, we're, we'll be there maybe, you know, three, four hours, and all of a sudden, you have no idea where time went. So that's, <laughs> that's oh, it. Mike uh, Leach will talk you to death, boy. He would talk and he would tell you a whole story and then another story and then another story after that, man. But, I got a chance to meet him last year in Arizona, man. We had some good times. We had some good talks. Yeah. He drew up some of those plays for me in the back of a napkin, too, man. I was like, Mike, all right, I get it, man. I get it. You're the mad scientist, man. Relax. Uh, but but um, listen, man, uh, KJ, I appreciate you stopping by, man. Seriously, I really do because, uh, you know, I, I fought hard to get this interview, man, because I wanted to talk to you after the game. And I wanted to see, you know, where your mind was especially after everything you've been through. And uh, it, it sounds like you're on the right track. Um, you found the right home uh, and you found a place uh, that's gonna elevate you, man, in a way that you can go to the next level and play on Sundays, man. So you keep balling like this. I think we're gonna be talking a lot more, man. So congratulations, um, enjoy the W, man. Tell Mike I said hi and um, man, go get Arkansas this week. Will do. Thanks, Reggie. Appreciate it, man. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, you too, man. Fox College Football is powered by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here. College football on Fox.